3D printers are no different than any other machine or tool. Keep it clean and keep it lubricated so it's running at peak performance. Let's dive into the best practices for keeping your 3D printer running as smoothly and efficiently as possible. Over time, the lubricants used to keep your 3D printer running smoothly will dry up or be pushed out of the bearings by regular motion and use. You should only add more lubricant if you find your 3D printer's rods are a little dry after several hundred hours of 3D printing. Everyone recommends something a little different, especially depending on the type of motion system used. Linear rails like those on a CraftBot XL's axes have different requirements than the linear rods used on most other printers. Even still, 3D printers like the Ender 3 V2 use V-wheels for motion, which have their own requirements. A good rule of thumb to follow is to check the recommended lubrication guidelines in your 3D printer's manual. Otherwise, you want to use greases for lead screws, except when your lead screw nut is plastic, as the grease can degrade the plastic, and use oils for rods. A simple way to apply lubricant is to move the printer to all the minimum limits. Add lubricant to the rods and the screws, then move the printer to the maximum limits and repeat. This should decently lubricate your printer, but in some circumstances you may need to remove the bearing completely in order to adequately lubricate it. In the case of V-Wheel 3D printers, lubrication is not something you need to concern yourself with as you have plastic wheels riding on aluminum, so the two surfaces should roll smoothly, but you should still replace the wheels if you can feel as flat spots or they don't turn smoothly at all. As the 3D printer moves around, the seals on the bearings attached to each carriage will sweep dust to the limits of the motion system. You will find that the fans actually collect dust and can build up a sort of cobweb on them and anything near them, including around the hot end. Any horizontal surface, no matter how hard it is to reach, will have some amount of dust. It's an inevitability, and while it won't negatively impact your 3D prints, except if your build plate is dusty, as that would prevent adhesion, it would be wise to give your 3D printer a good dusting off every month or so. A quick wipe with a microfiber cloth and canned air to clean off any of the hard to reach areas is enough to keep your 3D printer in working order. Although it won't often matter, in rare cases, the fasteners that hold your 3D printer together can shake loose. Maybe they aren't so loose they fall out, but I have found that some screws I thought were tight had actually loosened up over time and began affecting print quality. Drive pulleys and lead screw couplers should be the first screws you check up on if you are already having 3D printer issues. Screws that are key to the proper motion are the most important to keep tight. Hobbed gears are the key to your 3D printer reliably pushing filament through its system. Some gears have sharper teeth than others that enables them to have a firmer grip on filament. But if there is a jam it can't push through, then you may find that the gears strip the filament and fill themselves with dust. Clearing the jam at the nozzle won't be the end of it, as now the gears will need to be cleared out before you can print again. With some extruders, you can easily see the teeth and clean them out with some tweezers or a hobby knife. Others you'll need to disassemble completely to get access to them. In general, the teeth should be fine most of the time, but after a period of rough extruding, you will want to clean out the feeder gears. Skirts, purge blobs, failed prints, and filament scraps have a tendency to accumulate around your 3D printer unless you are diligent about cleaning it up and keeping a trash can nearby. It's much easier to stay on top of it before it becomes a problem, so make it a good habit to pick up any debris whenever you get up to check on your prints, or after you start a print and walk away, or when you grab your next finished print. The proliferation of desktop 3D printers has meant that more and more of them are built using 3D printed components, components that would otherwise be much too expensive to manufacture using traditional techniques. However, because these printed parts are still made of plastic, they can encounter a phenomenon called creep, where stress exhibited on a part can over time cause it to sag and fail. Weight bearing components or heat facing components can deform over an extended period of time and necessitate replacing in order to keep the 3D printer operational. The main printed parts you want to look at are the parts under tension like bed holders, bed tensioners, or spool holders, or parts that may get warm like motor mounts or hot end mounts. You don't need to check for this often, maybe once every three or so months is sufficient, so of course, if you notice some sudden difficulty with your 3D printer, it's a good idea to check up on this. Typically, 3D printer belts are glass fiber lined TPU. The glass fibers add enough rigidity to prevent stretching yet are capable of bending around pulleys without weakening like steel core belts might. Stretching is going to happen as these belts will be under tension at all times, so regular replacement is necessary. Besides replacement of the belts, you should also give regular checkups to the tension overall, as it is common for belts to slip from their attachment points, depending on what holds them in place. A quick way to properly tension is to tighten any belt tensioners to the point that the carriages stick and don't move smoothly, then slowly loosen the tension just to the point where it runs well again. 
Unless you're using a PTFE tube as a guide tube on a direct drive 3D printer, you're going to regularly replace the PTFE tube integral for Bowden 3D printers. The small collet that holds the tube in place has small metal teeth, and over time, the regular retractions and extrusions that the 3D printer makes will pinch the Bowden tube until it's so worn out that the collet just can't grip it anymore. When this happens, you will be able to see a clear difference in the outer diameter of the Bowden tube, or if you encounter even the smallest jam, the Bowden tube will slide right out of the hot end or extruder, coiling loose filament everywhere. Temporarily, you can trim the Bowden tube a few millimeters so the collet can grip a new portion of the tube, but you can only do this so much before the tube is too short to allow free movement for the print head. Once it's short enough, you will need to order a new Bowden tube altogether and replace it. Almost every 3D printer comes standard with a brass nozzle for two reasons. Brass is inexpensive to machine and is decently thermally conductive, so it will heat up nicely. The benefits that make brass nozzles easy to make also means they're quite soft. Well, relatively so. Jamming the nozzle into a glass bed or dragging it across the build surface can deform the nozzle orifice. Some 3D printing materials are abrasive, like the particles in glow-in-the-dark filament that makes them glow, or the carbon fiber in Nylon X, and they are abrasive enough to rather quickly tear up a brass nozzle, blowing out the diameter from 0.4 millimeters to 0.8 millimeters in less than the spools with the filament, in a worst case scenario. If your 3D printer just isn't printing as well as it used to, a nozzle swap might be what you need to bring it back up to snuff. If you have a microscope or some magnifying glasses, you might be able to see for yourself just how bad your nozzle actually is. Even if you never print with abrasive materials, you will want to replace your brass nozzle regularly, perhaps even once every six months of regular use. Before the dawn of affordable bed leveling sensors, it was much more common to see 3D printers use springs and wing nuts to hold the printer's bed to its carriage. Often this would mean that as the printer moves and vibrates, the wing nuts and later thumb screws could shake themselves loose. Maybe only a couple turns, and in my experience even completely off the printer. Nowadays it is more often to see a bed rigidly mounted to the carriage and a sensor to make up the difference in the bed level before the start of every print. It's much less pertinent to keep an eye on your 3D printer's bed, but if your printer still uses springs, watch the skirt of your 3D prints at least once a week to be sure it's not printing too far or too close. As hard as I tried to limit it to 10, I do have an honorable mention. Make sure your 3D printer's firmware is up to date. Some 3D printers will check on every startup if there is a new firmware by looking over Wi-Fi, whereas others you need to actually seek out the firmware yourself to see if there's anything new. Usually you can go to the manufacturer's website and see if there's any new release, what changes have been made, because in most cases it's just a couple little things like adding in a wizard or making some small fixes that most of the time you don't notice. But sometimes there are some pretty major fixes that might actually solve whatever problem you're having. So if you feel like you're having some issues with your printer and you know you haven't done a firmware update in a while, you might wanna check that out. Maintaining your 3D printer is an important yet often overlooked part of the 3D printing experience. As tedious as it can be at times to clean and take care of your machine, it's just that, taking care of it to make sure it's always running at peak performance and you don't have any premature failure of its components. Are there details of your maintenance routine that I didn't mention here? Because I'd love to hear what you do to keep your 3D printers in tip top shape. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. One of these tips is actually directed at myself and that's to keep your area tidy from any filament debris. What I actually did to help solve this for myself was to design and 3D print a trash can that clips onto my shelving system so that all of my filament debris can go right into that. I can unclip it and go dispose of that in a larger trash can somewhere else. If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you in the next one.